The polar decomposition theorem states that if we have a second order tensor F whose determinant is positive, that it can be written as the product of a rotation tensor R and a symmetric positive definite tensor, either U or V, depending on which side of R we do the multiplication. Uh, U and V have the same eigenvalues, so they share the same eigenvalues, but their eigenvectors differ. So the eigenvectors of U are Ri, and the eigenvectors of V we'll call Li, respectively. And the rotation R itself can be written in terms of these eigenvectors as Li tensor outer product Ri. And I'd like to go through the proof of this theorem here. It'll allow us to exercise some of our tools that we've developed. So uh, just before doing that, though, let me just note that U is called the right stretch tensor, and V is known as the left stretch tensor. OK, so for the proof, let's first observe that F transpose F is going to be symmetric, positive, definite. And that means I can have a spectral representation for it. And I'll write for the spectral representation lambda i squared are going to be the eigenvalues. And I'll choose as my eigenvectors ri. And so and the, the labels I've chosen for the eigenvalues and eigenvectors are arbitrary, but uh, they'll match up with what uh, one sees in the statement of the theorem. So F transpose F is clearly symmetric, because if I take its transpose, I'll get F transpose F. And it's positive definite, because if I apply uh, it to a vector from the left and the right, I'm always going to get a number that's greater or equal to 0, unless that vector is identically equal to 0. So that's a simple fact. OK, so let's go ahead and assign to U, we'll assign U to be the unique matrix square root of F transpose F. And and if I do that, then I'll also have a spectral representation for you, which is that it is the sum of lambda i, r i, tensor outer product r i. So, and this is the unique representation of the square root of f transpose f, that's symmetric positive definite. Okay, so that's just a choice I can make. I can easily always compute f transpose f, so I can also compute its matrix square root. Let me now define r to be f u inverse. Uh, and if I can show that R is a rotation, so an element of SO3, then we'll have the first decomposition, namely that F is equal to RU. So let's go ahead and check to see if R is a rotation. So I'll just compute R transpose R. R transpose R is U inverse transpose F transpose F U inverse. Uh, U inverse transpose is just U inverse. And F transpose F is U squared by my definition of U. So I'm going to end up with R transpose R is equal to the identity. Uh, and it's relatively straightforward to show that the determinant of R is plus 1. So it's going to be actually an SO3. So that completes the first part of the decomposition. So we've shown that F can be written as a rotation R times a symmetric positive definite tensor U, uh, and that U is unique. Uh, we can now do the same thing with FF transpose. FF transpose is symmetric, because if I take the transpose of FF transpose, I'll get FF transpose. And it's also positive definite, which is easy to check by applying it uh, to a vector, let's say, x on the right, and then dotting that result with x on the left. And because of that, since it's symmetric positive definite, I, can, I have a spectral representation for it. And let me go ahead and call that spectral representation mu i squared li tensor outer product li. And now we'll play the same game. We'll go ahead and we'll assign v to be the unique square root of ff transpose. And that means I can write it as the sum of mu i li tensor outer product li. Uh, now, in the statement, the theorem was the statement that the eigenvalues of u and v are the same. So I'm going to need to show that mu i equals lambda i at some point. But let's first go ahead and continue along the way here. And let me go ahead and define r hat to be v inverse f. Okay, And what I'm going to need to show is that r hat is a rotation. And I'm also going to need to show that r hat is equal to r. And if I have that, uh, then I'm essentially done with the proof. So r hat, r hat transpose I can expand as v inverse f, f transpose v inverse transpose. Uh, noting that v is symmetric, I end up with v inverse v squared v inverse, which is the identity. So r hat is, uh, is certainly orthogonal, and it's easy enough to, then to show that it's plus one determinant. So 
it's a rotation. Okay, so the, the, the only remaining things I need to do is show that mu i equals lambda i and that r hat equals r. And out of that process, I'll also get that representation that I have up here, namely that r is equal to l i tensor hour product r i. So, so we, right now what we've shown is that f is equal to r u and it's equal to v r hat. So let me go ahead and write down f transpose f. So f transpose f using the first part of this decomposition here, I can write as r u transpose r u, which is just u squared. And that's going to be lambda i squared r i tensor out of product r i. I can also compute the same thing using the second part of the decomposition here. So I'll have v r hat transpose v r hat. And if I expand that out, I will end up with mu i squared r hat transpose l i tensor out of product r hat transpose l i. So now by uniqueness of the spectral decomposition, this tells me immediately that r hat transpose has to be r i l i because this term here has to equal this term. And the eigenvalues have to match. So lambda i is going to be equal to mu i. So that was one of the things that I needed to show to complete the proof. The last thing I needed to show is that r is equal to r transpose. And the way I'm going to do that is consider f transpose, or sorry, ff transpose. If I use the second part of the decomposition, uh, then I can write that as lambda i squared li tensor out of product li. Notice that I didn't write mu here because I already know that mu is equal to lambda. And I can use, rewrite it using the first part of the decomposition, namely ru and I end up with lambda i r r i outer product r r i. Again, by the uniqueness of spectral decomposition, this tells me that r is equal to l i tensor outer product r. So in particular, this term here has to match that term there. Okay. Well, if I look at those expressions, I see that r is equal to r transpose. So I've, I've completed the proof now. I have that I can write f as a rotation times a symmetric positive definite tensor u, or I can do it the other way around, symmetric positive definite tensor v times that same rotation r. 